What's up, CrackTube? Today we're going to talk about another uh, Cracks Commute cassette review. And um, before I get into it, I just want to explain uh, the process of how I decided this is going to happen. So what I did is I have all my tapes, um, all my cassette tapes up on a shelf. And they were at one time all alphabetized with the J cards facing outwards. But I rearranged them randomly and then faced the J cards inwards so that... I didn't have any idea where the cassettes were and then randomize them once more. So when I go um, to get in my car in the morning, what I do is I just stop by my cassette shelf, you know, kind of close my eyes a little bit and just grab a tape and just go. And whatever I grab, I grab, you know. And um, so today's tape is actually one I can't say anything bad about. I'm kind of excited to get to a tape that I that I want to give a negative review to, but um, a little backstory first. Um, when I first moved um, into this one really cool like loft apartment that was awesome, it like took up three stories, but was in like one of the worst neighborhoods um, in Rochester. It uh. <laughs> It was an awesome apartment. It was really cheap, too. But my friend was helping me move in. And um, it was kind of, the air was pretty stale in there. And he was opening a window in the kitchen. He went to open a window to let some fresh air in. And he's like, hey, dude. He's like, are you still, like, a big Talking Heads fan? And I was like, yeah, of course, man. I love the Talking Heads. Why do you ask, right? He's like, you'll never believe what I found. He found an almost complete Talking Heads tape cassette tape discography along top the the um the top of the window like the um, you know like up top where there's like a little shelf thing you know where you can set stuff just lined up in the curtain kind of hang like hung in front of it so whoever lived there previously either just didn't want them anymore or totally forgot about them I could see either happening so that was really awesome like I was super stoked and um so anyway, I gave it up, you know, the cat's out of the bag. The, talk, the tape I'm going to talk about today is the Talking Heads um, Remain in Light, which is actually my favorite Talking Heads album. And um, a little background, this was recorded in 1980s. Um, it was recorded in parts of New York and parts of the Bahamas. And um, it was actually produced by one of my favorite uh, producers of that time period, Brian Eno. So that's you know, really cool in itself. And this tape was a little different because they were experimenting more with things that they hadn't previously uh, fucked around with, like samples and tape loops and combining samples and tape loops into infinite loops and using that as part of the music, which at the time was really innovative. I mean, it was nothing new for Eno, but for the Talking Heads, that was like way out there. So that was pretty cool, and they all also experimented with like African drum beats and really cool stuff like that. So this is kind of like, I don't like to use terms like this, but like an experimental um, Talking Heads release, early Talking Heads release. Um, I believe this is their third or fourth studio album, and it is a burner. Like this is, this is awesome. Um, normally what I would do is go and like suggest some highlights, some of the best tracks, but this whole thing is awesome. There's no, there's nothing on here you skip. Everything is good. Um, I would say probably the most popular songs, if you're interested in just like Googling or, you know, searching for a few on YouTube, definitely Cross-Eyed and Painless was a big one that the, the kids were uh, dancing to at the time. Um, Once in a Lifetime, you know, that one gets a little, yeah, whatever. But, like, this whole fucking thing is a burner. Um, not much I can really say about this tape that ha hasn't already been said. Um, if you guys aren't, like, really into music, like, this is something I can see, like, everybody getting into. I know a lot of the stuff I listen to is, like, a little bit um, out there and kind of maybe a little hard to get into, some harsh shit. But this is, like, um, a release I think everybody can appreciate, regardless of what type of music you're into, whether you like pop music fucking R&B, punk, metal, fucking butt rock, whatever you like, man, this this will, is going to appeal to you. So, totally recommended tape. Awesome tape. This was super excited. Just awesome to have to listen to in the car to do my little review thing on YouTube. I was like, yes! 
awesome because I do like to listen to this tape, you know, um, a couple times a year. So really cool. Um, again, uh, a part of the show is I'm going to talk about the packaging. So nothing too cool going on here, guys. Just a regular tape. Um, just, you know, your average white cassette here. Um, here's the cover art. This is actually the censored cover art. The original cover art is much cooler. Um, I'm going to use that as the thumbnail. So you probably click the original cover art, which I feel is much, much better in my opinion. But, um, you know, we got to censor everything over here. So this is what we got. Um, and on the inside, you know, just some liner notes. So really bland, boring packaging. Not much to say about that. But the music speaks for itself, guys. This is an awesome release. So on a scale of skip it, tape it, or cop it, this gets a cop it all day. So, um, yeah, listen, class, do your homework. Go listen to uh, Remains in Light. All right, crack out.